Okay, now we want to come to Nusantan, which is Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore. Let's keep going. Okay, now this is a typical traditional Nusantara mosque. This is actually, I believe, from Indonesia. Okay, now that is called a sacred mountain in their traditions. And this was sacred to them before Islam came. So you're going to have three tiers, four tiers, five tiers. And, you know, it's uh, very good for the rain. It's very good for the heat and the humidity. And, you know, also then it's sacred in the eyes of the people. So that's smart. Let's keep going. Here's another one. I think they're beautiful. Here's another one. Sacred mountains. Cosmic mountains, actually, it's called. Cosmic mountain. Let's take the next one. Another cosmic mountain. Don't you think that's beautiful? And if you go inside of them, they are so fantastic. You think there's a big carpet on the floor? No. It's tight. It's marble, because again, it's it's humid there. Carpets like this, they're not nice after a while. So they want to have it marble. Okay. And then people bring in prayer mats and things like that. Okay. Let's keep going. Another one. Another one, keep going. Okay, now that is a big what? Drum outside the mosque. Cultural convention. What's it about? Calling to prayer. Haram, isn't it? You think they don't call the Adam? Yes, they do. But they have jungle. They have thick forests. And sound doesn't carry well. The sound of the human voice doesn't carry well in the jungle, but drums do. So they have drum language. Boom! Boom! And then they have certain beats that say, come and gather. Other ones say there's danger. Other ones say there's time for prayer. They speak the language of drums. Many people do that, in Africa especially. Drum language. Okay? And so they put up these huge drums. That is an ancient Indonesian Nusantara tradition. And we adopt it because that is the cultural imperative. This is something good. It suits the situation in those lands. Okay? And it's, it's, we're not going to stop calling the Adam. We do that too. But we also do this as well. Let's keep going. Okay, now here, if you look closely, you'll see that going into the mosque, this is typical in Santara, that you've got to wade through a pool of water. Well, what's that bid'ah all about? <laughs> Haram, right? Did the Prophet do that? Okay, why do they do it? Well, because they are a rice civilization. They work in rice paddies. And rice paddies can be dry much of the year. But in the beginning, the rice paddy is muddy. Very muddy. And you've got to go barefoot. And then you've got this peasant coming to the mosque with mud all over his feet. So you're going to beat him and say, wash your feet, wash your feet. No. So he's got to go make wudu, usually. He probably doesn't have it. So he's got to walk through a pool of water like that to go make wudu. And of course, when he makes wudu, is he going to wash his feet? Okay, and then he's got to walk through it coming out. And then he's got to walk through it coming into the mall. So basically, he's not going to track. Okay? And you're going to have to take off your shoes, too, because unless you can jump really well, you're going to have to walk in the water. Okay? Now, there's a big problem with that. And that is that the water gets filled with all kinds of organic things. And you get yucky larvae and mosquitoes. So what are you going to do culturally? Put fish in there. You see, beautiful fish. They can be those, what they call them, koi or whatever. Beautiful fish. And you know what? If you're hungry, you're going to eat that fish. <laughs> See, so this is also cultural imperative. Is there anything wrong with it? No, this is right. This needs to be respected. Okay, let's keep going.